For more than 150 years, Trinity University has celebrated human inquiry. Our innovative curriculum is rooted in a distinctive blend of the liberal arts and sciences. Students and faculty hone creative curiosity by answering questions and questioning answers. In a supportive, interdisciplinary environment, they seek ways to build bridges and make connections. And with intentional meaning and purpose, they are driven by a sense of duty to themselves and to the world. Add in opportunities for undergraduate research, experiential learning, and nationally recognized pre-professional programs in business, communication, healthcare, education, and entrepreneurship, you get the full Trinity experience. The liberal arts plus. And while this experience may end with a Trinity degree, it's just the beginning of a lifetime of inspired exploration and perpetual discovery. The Southern Collegiate Athletic Conference and the NCAA promote good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. Profanity, racial, or sexist comments or other intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives, including singling out anyone by name, number, or position, or grounds removed from the site of competition, other disciplinary actions, public intoxication, as well as the consumption or possession of alcoholic beverages and or tobacco products is strictly prohibited. Persons throwing objects or participating in other acts in conflict with good sportsmanship and fair play are subject to ejection. Also, Trinity requires that you wear your mask indoors except while eating or drinking. Please do not use flash photography. Thank you for your cooperation in supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. After player introductions, we'll go right into the game. So, the Centenary College Ladies start in five. Number two, a freshman guard, Mary Lede. Number 21, a senior guard, Jenny Mayberry. 
Welcome back to Calgar Gym for some more SCAC basketball action. This time it's Trinity women's basketball facing off against the Centenary ladies. Trinity riding a 15 game win streak, their longest since the 2012 2013 season. Their last loss came November 12th at number 14 Harden Simmons. It's been a long time since. Coach Cameron Hill's Trinity Tigers have been on the wrong side of a result. And Brian, that means there's been some news this week. Yeah, not only have they won 15 in a row, those two losses you talked about, very close to tough ranked teams. And now the news is that Trinity themselves ranked in the top 25 for the first time this season. They clock in at number 24 according to D3 Hoops. And so just a number and a record to solidify what we already know and what people here at Trinity know. This is one of the best teams in the country and they've shown it all year long. And Coach Hill really emphasizing to us that he does not focus on the win streak. He does not focus on the outside noise, the rankings. But like you said, it, it goes to show how well this team has played. They're finally getting the recognition that they deserve. And this evening, it's a very familiar starting five. Maggie Shipley, Haley Coleman, Maggie Robbins, Ashley Milton, and Ava Limoncello. For the Centenary Ladies, it is Addie Tremmy, Janae Mayberry, Alana Jones, Mary Lede, and Amelia Bagwell. The ladies come into this one three and 16, and one in 10 in conference play, rooted to the bottom of the conference standings. A lot of energy in the gym for the men's game that really provided a lot back and forth. Both teams going on terrific runs, and I'm sure we're going to see some more high-quality basketball, particularly from the number 24 Trinity Tigers. They are in their final huddle, which they now break, and we're ready to jump it up. Ten minutes on the clock. It'll be Milton to jump against Bagwell. Oh. Hoisted into the air by the referee. And we are underway with Robbins controlling the tip for Trinity. And I think a little bit of a switch there right from the beginning. Not used to seeing Ashlyn Milton take the tip. Usually Haley Coleman or Kelly Simmons if she's in there. But Milton not only getting the tip, but getting the first bucket of the game. So nice start for her. Milton has scored in double figures in 41 of 58 competitive collegiate games. I mean, that is some record. And 16 out of 18 this year, including six in a row. She's almost inevitable on the offensive end. And when she starts hot, you can better look out as she did there. Sprinting back now to get back on defense. And Trinity forced the turnover as Bagwell called for the double dribble. These teams meeting back on December 19th. Trinity winning in Louisiana, 83 to 50. Kelly Simmons, the big star for Trinity in that one, 14 points, 14 boards off the bench, including nine offensive rebounds. She was dominant on the glass. And we'll get a healthy dose of Kelly Simmons, I'm sure, as this game goes on. Here's Milton on the feed looking for Shipley. A couple of quick turnovers for the Tigers. As the ladies are able to advance it. Trap in the corner. Trimmy able to come away with the ball. And the three-pointer is on the money for Mary Lede. 31% shooter this year. Definitely capable from the outside is Coleman. Very comfortable on the inside. Easy two points for her to give Trinity back the lead. And Lede, the freshman from Opelousas, Louisiana, did not play against Trinity back in December. She did start against Shriner just yesterday up in Kerrville. She played 20 minutes, but she was scoreless. So a nice hot start for her with that first three-pointer that put Centenary up at the start, but Trinity right back on top, four to three. And already a third turnover of the game for the ladies, Trinity committing two of their own to start. See if the teams can tighten it up as we're just a minute and a half into this game. Coleman with the skip pass. Robbins for three from the near side. She comes up short, but grabs her own rebound. And she's fouled on the putback. Robbins has been shooting the ball really well of late. Shot 50% or better. 
in the last four games. Was off the mark with that one. Had a really good find from Coleman. First one is good for the Tigers point guard, Maggie Robbins. And interesting that we just mentioned Lede got on the board after not playing against Trinity and going scoreless against Shriner. Robbins herself was scoreless against Centenary in Shreveport and now she's on the board. So a couple players that were eager to get in the box score right away. But Robbins, as we've seen all year, so much more than a shooter, really the facilitator for this offense, gets things going in so many different ways. And in Louisiana had 10 steals, only the second Tiger to ever do that, joining Jenna Smith. So even though she was not in the point column, she was doing so much to help her team win. She puts up a fight underneath that time and forces the miss from Bagwell. Yeah, Jenna Smith, that's pretty good company in terms of Trinity all-time lists. Here's Milton on the drive down the baseline, finds a cutting Coleman. And that layup rims out. And the ladies able to break the press. Trinity back now on defense as it's on the right wing with Trimmy. The corner three is good for Alana Jones. A couple makes early on for the ladies and they're back in front here. Here's Milton looking to respond to three of her own. That one rattles out. Both the gents and ladies shooting from outside. Had a very impressive clip in this gym today. Here's Shipley on the quick feed from Coleman. Robbins thought she got bumped. The layup came off the bottom of the board. And here's another three-pointer. This one way too strong for Trimmy. And Shipley. Foul on the drive. Speaking of someone who wants to see the ball go through the net, Shipley put up a career high two games ago. 29 points at Southwestern, but then she was held to just five points on the road at TLU last game. First free throw, no good. Coach Hill emphasizing that TLU game plan specifically for Maggie Shipley and talked about her maturity and realizing, you know, some games, the game plan is specifically for me and sometimes it's gonna work and I've gotta figure out how I can facilitate for teammates, how I can open things up for other players. And obviously with Trinity going on to win, she did just that. Yeah, she's been a real focal point for opponents now, just seeing how quality of a player she is and Coach Hill, as he is so good at doing, coming up with the perfect quote, this time from Ted Lasso, saying that Maggie Shipley really is like a goldfish with a short memory. She understands what teams are trying to do to her, understands that every game won't be her best, but she's able to turn around and move on to the next one. But I know Ryan and I, and really a lot of people around Calgar Gym and across campus, always looking forward to that coaches speak section of the Trinity recaps. If you don't know what we're talking about, Every game after Trinity plays, as ladies will be called for a travel there, every game recap you'll see a little quote from the head coaches here at Trinity and Cam Hill known for his movie quotes, so I highly recommend you check those out. They are, they are a doozy. Yeah, definitely a film guru of sorts, Coach Hill. Here's Limoncello off the screen, open for three, that one rims out. Tigers now down to two of eight shooting. Centenary have only put up four shots so far. But their two makes came from beyond the arc. Another turnover this time. And that three from Jones, it's like these players really trying to get off the schnod in whatever they haven't been able to succeed in. Alana Jones had attempted 15 threes this year and had not made one. And the first one that she took today was good. So a couple of players getting on the on the scoring column and Jones knocking down her first three of her career, freshman from Shreveport. On the other hand, we're very used to seeing Coleman inside like that, getting it done with some nice touch. And she contests the shot at the other end, forces the miss. And Shipley able to track down the loose ball and just put the brakes on in time. Here's the skip pass over to Milton. It's trying to be getting everybody involved on offense. Here's Limoncello, Coleman from the mid-range. That one comes up short. 
Low scoring quarter so far. We're just about halfway through the first. Carly Leong sitting at the scorer's table now. Destiny Powell alongside her. Set to come in for the ladies. Two misses on that trip down the floor for the maroon and gold. Here's Shipley in the corner. Milton down low for Coleman. He was able to seal off the defender and put it up for two points. Now up to six in the game. And we will take the media timeout. Trinity in front, nine to six. Four minutes and 34 seconds to go in the first. We'll be right back. Coming out of the timeout, Trinity with four changes. Just Shipley keeping her place on the floor. As the ladies run the floor, and Alana Jones up for two. Cut the lead down to one. Leong, Nelson, Simmons, and Ackerman in alongside Shipley. Ackerman making her return after some timeout. Uh, Simmons, who did the damage against the ladies earlier this season, quickly into the points. Answers with a layup of her own. Ackerman nearly able to jump into the passing lane that time. Jones just tracks it down. Simmons contests the shot, and it's out for Centenary Ball. A mid-range jumper no good for Destiny Powell, and a blocked shot. For Maggie Shipley, Leong will bring it clear. Nelson wide open, thought about the three-pointer, found Simmons open underneath. Here's Leong baseline. He's worked some good position under the basket, kicks it out, and now Ackerman from the left wing. That one comes up short. Ackerman still looking to find a rhythm, find her stroke. And this her fifth season as a part of the program. That one off the mark from the other side for Leong, who's in a similar position, trying to break a little bit of a shooting slump this year. As the ladies throw it away again, as many turnovers as points here in the early action. Yeah, and that was really the story of their loss in Shreveport. They had 42 turnovers, the most they've had all year. Of course, a lot of that can be credited to this Trinity defense that is relentless with their pressure but early on, doesn't seem like the ladies have made that adjustment as they have eight just in the first quarter. That would put them on pace for about 32, so an improvement from the 42, but still not where they want to be. There's the third turnover for the Tigers as Leong is called for a travel. Leong with a hand on the inbounds pass, but Mayberry able to dribble it clear, Alana Jones Carried a little too much speed into that layup. Uh, the follow-up is good. And that's two early offensive rebounds from Jasmine Jones, so she's doing a nice job there oh, under the class, putting it back on that last one for the first bucket for her on the game. Leong with a strong layup on the offensive end for the Tigers. That time, 
Jasmine Jones called for the travel as her foot slid across the hardwood. And the assistant coaches for Centenary frustrated on that one. Assisting interim head coach Dana Dunson took over from Jason Schmitz, who is the longest tenured head coach in Centenary women's history at just three years. That kind of shows you it's been a revolving door leading this team. That time the layup too strong for Mabry. They're still right in this game as we're into the final two minutes of the first quarter. 13 to 10 is the Tiger lead. And right there, Emily Nelson pleading for the ball. She was wide open behind the three-point line, but Carly Leong did not see her. So the possession continues, and there Nelson open under the basket, so she, instead she gets the layup. So one way or another, Nelson was going to get the ball. And Ackerman's always going to give you one or two of those really nice finds. That one ends up as an assist for Nelson as the ladies take a timeout. Good to see Ackerman back out and doing her thing on the court. Looks like it'll just be a 30 second timeout, so we'll stick with them. It's a Trinity lead, 15 to 10. Coleman leading with six points on three of six shooting. Since the start of January, the last eight games, it's been either Milton or Shipley. For a while, they were alternating back and forth as to who had the most points in which game. But it's been one or the other. Although Haley Coleman, of course, always provides a big contribution, and she's led the way early in this one. And I mean, you talk about how it's been Milton or Shipley, and it just reminds you what depth the Tigers have when you don't even mention Coleman, who is the returning first team all stack member last year, leading the way in the conference in field goal percentage. But when she's the third person you mention, it just shows what talent this Tigers team has. A big pass forward for Alana Jones, who traveled going up for the layup. Danielle Devalos is in First time I think we've seen her at home in conference play. Number 34 for Trinity. And then Simmons gets two more underneath. Nelson with a hand on the ball, swats it away. Dishes it off for Devalos, who puts up the three. Too strong. Leong able to get the rebound. And no whistle. That's her follow up was heavily contested. She gets back and gets a hand on the ball. Under a minute to go. Seven is the Trinity lead. That time, Destiny Powell couldn't get it to go. 40 seconds to shoot. You did get it perfectly, Ryan. This is the first time we've seen Danielle Davalos here at home. She has not played for the Tigers since November 7th at UMHB. Uh, Simmons steps into a three, had a big make from the outside against TLU down the stretch of that game. That one didn't go. And there'll be a chance for Centenary to hold for the last shot if they wish. Here's Alana Jones, under 10 to play. Two to shoot as Powell gets it off, but comes off the front of the rim. And it'll be a seven point game going into the interval. Trinity shooting eight of 19 in the quarter for 42%. Centenary, after a hot start, ended up just 25% on four of 16. Still, they've made two of their four three pointers. That'll be a silver lining for Coach Dunson. Is in discussion now with his team about how they can get back in this game. We'll be right back for the second quarter in just a moment.
Back underway here for the second quarter of action. Tigers in front 17 to 10 here on their home floor. Centenary getting up an early three. You mentioned they shot two of four in the first quarter. That one won't go. Or Trimmy. Herself 0 for 2. Milton back into the game. Replacing Devalos, who got a little run there towards the end of the quarter. Two quick subs for the ladies. Mary Leda and Diamond Drumgo. Two first year guards into the game for the first time. And Drumgo able to grab a rebound. Fires it to Jones. Across for Powell, who's into the lane now. Nice sidestep and the right handed finish for two points. Nelson running the offense right now for the Tigers. Leong posting up her defender. Milton able to find Carla Leong. Now kicked back out for an Ashland Milton. Splash down three. First make from the outside for the Tigers. Who else? But well, Ashland Milton, far and away the most consistent shooter for Coach Hill's team. And the official is going to say, Centenary will get the timeout here. The shot clock is under 20, though, so Coach Hill wanting a 10 second violation. We'll see which came first. It is the timeout that was called first, so Centenary will retain possession. Nearly another turnover would have been 12 on the day to match their 12 points, but we'll take a quick break here on Tiger Network. Be right back. After the early media timeout there, we're back with 8.49 to go in the half. The ladies looking for the long pass to the two cutters underneath. That one overthrown. And it will be side out for the Tigers. And their offensive end. Simmons sets the screen, and it's Ackerman in the corner. That one comes up short. Good look that time off the feed from Nelson. Jasmine Jones able to keep her dribble just long enough to avoid the travel. Three-pointer no good for Lede. After the early make for her. It's been a slow start for the Tigers in one particular category, and that's the three-point shooting. That's been a theme this year as Ackerman decides to spot up another one, that one just off the front of the rim. They rank third in the SCAC, but out of all the categories that you look at, it's the one area where you can really sense some room to improve. And Coach Hill talking to us earlier this week about how once they do get that shooting, which he is fully confident that they will, They'll become an even scarier team because they've already been able to string together 15 wins in a row, most of those by double digits, and it's been with three-point shooting that really hasn't been up to par. And so as soon as shooters like Ackerman, who are finally back in the lineup, really get going, it's just going to add another weapon. And Kelly Simmons, who misses that one, she's also been working on her three-point game. So something to keep an eye on as these home games continue this week for Trinity. Centenary able to step into a three-pointer, and Addie Trimmy knocks it down. 
And that cuts the lead to five after a few consecutive misses for the Tigers. Ackerman now 0 of 4 from beyond the arc. Powell brings it up for the ladies, double teamed. Nelson got a hand on the ball, just disrupting the rhythm for the visitors. And although Ackerman is 0 for 4, I think Coach Shotland and Coach Hill will be perfectly happy with letting her gain her footing as Centenary knocks down another three. Destiny Powell knocks that one down and pulls the ladies to within two. But you mentioned Ackerman has missed her last several games, has not played since January 15. So kind of like what we saw on the men's side with Tanner Brown not making a three in over a month, you just got to keep shooting and eventually you'll get in a roll. Milton gets the rebound off the miss from Leon and Simmons able to profit. On the nice feed from Ashlyn Milton. Tigers need to get the offense going. They're still yet to really click into gear. And it's a two point game with six minutes to go in the half. Not what we expected, especially after the slow start in the first quarter. But the biggest change in this second quarter really has been Destiny Powell, and I know we were a little surprised to not see her start. She started in all but two or three games this year as that one from Simmons just rolls off the rim. But Destiny Powell averaging over 13 points a game. She was named the SCAC Player of the Week in early December, and she is the best player on this Centenary squad, and she's made all the difference. She has five points early on, two rebounds, had a nice assist under the basket on their last possession. So you can sense the change that she's brought on the court. Trinity still looking to respond. They still hold the lead just by two as Simmons gets it out to Leong and gets inside. We can't finish. Another turnover for Centenary, their 14th. And that'll be an opportunity for some of the starters to come back in. It's now the starting five on the floor for Coach Hill. Trinity, be one of 12 from three. Milton with the only make. She catches the inbounds pass and fires away. And that one comes home off the front of the rim. Still the only one knocking down the three ball for Trinity. When in doubt, go to Milton for the three off the inbounds pass. Lead back out to five. Drum go here on the dribble. Swings it over to Powell. Powell will step into the three. That one off the mark. That's a good offensive rebound and a good putback for Damon Drungo. A couple of the first year players bringing some energy off the centenary bench alongside Powell as Coleman wrestles that one away from Jones. And blocks the shot out for Trinity Ball. And a really nice start for Centenary on the offensive glass. Already five offensive rebounds. They had 20 offensive rebounds even in their loss against Schreiner just yesterday. So they're doing a nice job collecting the misses and getting second chance opportunities. So far it's paying off as they maintain just this three point deficit right there with Trinity as we approach the half. Centenary just about able to escape the full court pressure from the Tigers. Now 16 to shoot. Good pump fake. And it was just launched toward the rim by Leda. And it's been Jasmine Jones. She does it again. Her third offensive rebound puts it right back up. She's been the best on the glass. And Centenary within one now. Coleman finally hears the whistle go. And she's fouled on the shot attempt. We're talking about a team on a 15 game win streak up against a team with 16 losses this season. I mean, this is not the game that we expected. Obviously still plenty of time, and Coach Hill and Coach Shotland, they like to use the first half to kind of feel things out, although I'm sure they wouldn't want it to be this close. Usually the second half adjustments is where Trinity really start to pull away from teams. But credit to Centenary, came here and put up a fight so far. It's a two point game as Coleman makes the second free throw. Definitely, Ryan. I mean, you couldn't find two teams going in more opposite directions. Trinity winning 15 in a row, Centenary losing 10 in a row. But like you said, you never know what to expect, and Centenary really providing a fight here early on. 
great handles in the backcourt there for Milton. Eventually she's fouled after advancing it. Powell called for her first. Just the second team foul against the ladies here in the quarter. They're within two points despite 14 turnovers here in the first half. Wide open look for Shipley for three. That one's off to the right. And really just a few makes from the outside and this would be an entirely different game but Tigers have been ice cold with the exception of Milton. Two of 15 now. 0 of 13 for everyone not named Ashley Milton. And I wonder on that last one if Maggie Robbins would like to have that one back. She had a pretty open lane under the basket after she got around the centenary defense, could have laid it up. Instead, as she so often does, finding a teammate, but it was Maggie Shipley beyond the three-point line where she's not typically at her best, just a 10% shooter from three. And now with that three-pointer, Centenary takes their first lead since very early on in the first quarter. Tremie's put up five threes as Limoncello responds. Somebody else finally knocking down the long ball for the Tigers. Tremie now two of five from the outside. Robbins getting back and getting a hand on the ball, but Trimmy picks it up and puts it in for two. Tie game once again. Trimmy, someone that loves seeing these Tigers. She put up a career high 25 points back in December, even as the ladies lost by 33. She had quite the performance and already today off to a good start with eight points and Centenary forcing a turnover. So they are tied at 29, have a chance to take yet another lead. Shipley there called for the travel. No points so far for Maggie Shipley, including an 0 for 2 trip to the line. And really good hustle that time for Milton to get back into the passing lane and prevent Trinity, or sorry, Centenary from taking the lead. It would have been an easy two points for Destiny Powell. That three no good for Trimmy. Lemoncello gets the rebound. Now Shipley running it in the open court. They go through Coleman to get to Milton for three. Another big make for Ashlyn Milton, her third of the first half. And good ball movement to get there that time for the Tigers. Coleman with the assist. Yeah, beautiful passing there, looking like our very own San Antonio Spurs. Maggie Robbins finding Coleman but the defense collapsing on her, so Coleman right to Milton, open 4-3. So you'd say Jakob Pertl-esque? Is that where you're going with that? I think that's exactly right. At the other end, Tremie hoists another one up, no good. She's now at three of eight in the game. I noticed Coleman, her favorite athlete of all time is Kareem. So a little bit of a different era, but definitely see some of that in her game, the way she's able to dominate the glass. So that one's up and no good for Limoncello off the right. Robbins trying to save it in. And eventually the loose ball grabbed by Alana Jones. 120 to play here in the second quarter as Jasmine Jones tries to use the glass to answer back. Trinity currently in front by three, largely thanks to Milton who leads all scorers with 11 in this game. Said it's usually Shipley or Milton. Today, it's definitely Milton, at least in the first half. We'd have to look back. I don't know if Maggie Shipley's been held scoreless in a half this year, and that's what we're on pace for right now. As Trimmy hoists up the contested three late in the shot clock, and it'll be an easy two points for Limoncello as Robbins poked it out into the open court. Centenary can essentially hold for last shot here as they advance it for Alana Jones, but she's in attack mode, getting to the hoop, contested by Coleman. And Milton able to take three defenders out of the game there on the dribble. Shipley draws the foul. The block. Called against Mabry. Number 
Molly Pretty in to provide some shooting here on the final play of the half. Get it in for Shipley. And Ashton Milton open for three. That one comes up short. Can't put an exclamation point on a really strong first half, but Centenary able to make a three at the other end, and that means it'll be a two-point game going into the halftime break. Destiny Powell coming up with a huge make there at the end. She's up to eight in the game to lead the ladies alongside Addie Trimmy. It's been Ashley Milton with 11 and Haley Coleman with seven for the Tigers who I think will not be too happy going into the break with that scoreline, Brian, despite being in front. Yeah, and a pretty significant swing there on the final possession. Trinity had a chance to go up eight. They had that open three-point attempt from Milton, but she missed it, and then on the other end, Centenary taking advantage and Powell draining the three. So instead of being down eight after tying it at 29 and kind of going into the locker room feeling down on themselves, the ladies find themselves down two, and they have to be loving where they're at. Coach Dunson and the ladies giving Trinity all that they have. Haven't beaten Trinity before. 0-17 oh, all time against the Tigers, but they're putting up quite the battle here, so should be a great second half. As you mentioned a little bit early on, Coach Hill, Coach Shotland love making these halftime adjustments, and we've typically seen the Tigers come out of the half on fire. So it will be interesting to see if that's what's the case after this 15-minute break.
Starting second half for Centenary, number two, Mary Lede, 21, Jenny Mayberry, 24, Amelia Bagwell, 25, Alana Jones, 30, Annie Trimmy for Trinity, 11, Maggie Robbins, 20, Emily Michello, 25, Haley Coleman, 30, Ashley Milton, 44, Maggie Shipley, Trinity Ball, second half. Here we go. Back out for the second half of action here between Trinity University and Centenary College. And Brian, a lot to like for Coach Dunson and the ladies in that first half coming into the second, now just down two. Yeah, we talked a lot about it here at the half. It doesn't feel like Trinity's playing poorly at all. It genuinely feels like Centenary is playing some of their best basketball of the year. That's what's kept them so close down just two as we start this second half. And what stands out for sure the most is their three-point shooting. They're six for 15 from beyond the arc. That would be their second best mark of the season, only doing better against Birmingham Southern when they shot 46% from three and pulled out one of their three victories. Trinity, well, both teams actually going 36% from the floor in the first half. To your point though, Centenary shooting much better from the outside. Milton with three makes for um, three-point range, and Limoncello with the only other three-pointer for the Tigers. She's back out there, as is the entire starting five for Coach Hill. And Trinity hoping for a repeat of what they saw in Shreveport. They led by just eight as that one gets away, Tremi trying to get it to Mayberry. But down in Shreveport, Tigers were just up eight, at the half, and then they scored 23 unanswered points in the third quarter. So we talked a little bit, a little bit about it going into the half, the adjustments that are always made in the locker room. We'll see what Coach Hill and Coach Shotland drew up, and if the Tigers can execute here in the third quarter as they try to pull away. Coleman getting post position ended up being triple teamed as she went up for the shot. It was no good. That's Centenary with two quick turnovers here to start the half. And that was crucial for them in the second quarter, getting back into the game. They only committed three turnovers in that entire quarter. Already almost up to that mark here, with just a minute played in the third. Absolutely, after 11 turnovers in the first quarter, limiting it to three was a big step in the right direction for the ladies. Shipley's pass knocked out of bounds. Shipley held scoreless in a half for the first time since the opener this season as Milton gets a three up and off the rim, no good. The second chance opportunity once again for Milton. Comes up too strong on the inside. And she's tipped that one away into the arms of Shipley. We'll toss it out for Coleman. Great find underneath, Limoncello blocked by Trimmy. And before that block from Trimmy, you saw Lede all over Shipley, and you just said held scoreless in a half for just the first time since that opener in this season as Haley Coleman takes the contact and puts it up for two points going for the and one. That opening matchup, one of Trinity's lone two losses at the time, East Texas Baptist was ranked second in Division Three. The Tigers falling just short, 70 to 76, and Shipley scoring just two points in that game, both coming on free throws. And again, she's just a couple of games removed from a career high 29. So that punishment that she got on in the last game against TLU from the Bulldogs defense, maybe still showing its effects. Uh, she's putting the effort in on the defensive end and forces the turnover as Robbins will get the steal. Tosses it ahead for Milton, who quickly finds Coleman under the basket. And here come the Tigers, now up to a seven point lead. And another steal off the inbounds, a dish for Limoncello who misses. And then throws it away. Chance at pushing it out to nine. Spurn that time by Trinity. Uh, the ladies just can't keep hold of it right now as Milton comes up with another steal. 
And she'll step into the free throw line jumper. That one's off to the right. And last touch off Shipley. Even as Trinity pushed the lead out to seven, it could have been a lot more there. A couple of looks you expect them to make. Uh, it didn't go down as both teams make a change. I think you put it perfectly as you see Shipley staring down Powell as she tries to get the inbounds pass in. Even though she's had an off day from the floor, Shipley putting in tremendous effort defensively and causing some of these turnovers now up to seven in this quarter. And finally, Shipley gets an open lane and gets her first points of the game. So a great start to this third quarter for Maggie Shipley. And a good find that time by Milton as the Trinity defense really taking it up a level here to start the second half. Their lead now out to nine. Destiny Powell's back in the game for the ladies. And she's got it now after Leda was able to escape just barely without traveling. Could have been a host of different violations there on the turnover, but they'll say it was a carry. The shot clock was also below 20, so could have been a 10 second violation as well. Either way, it's turned over to Trinity. Already seven in the quarter, only three minutes played here for the ladies. And only one shot. And so that gets to the problem. We were talking about it during the men's game. It seems obvious that turnovers are an issue, but the real issue lies in not only do you give the other team an opportunity, but you rob yourself of an opportunity as Coleman gets a wide open layup there. But it just robs yourself of opportunities to put shots up and the ladies were hitting their shots when they got them up in the first half but the turnover is just killing them here in the third. Here's Powell. She's finally able to get a shot up, but the left-handed layup, no good. Trinity finding their rhythm. Coleman scoring off the screen moments ago. Here's Nelson for three, no good, but Milton crashes the offensive glass. The Tigers will get a second chance at it. Coleman rolls to the rim. Robbins can't find her. She'll repost here underneath. Kicked out for a Maggie Shipley three, and that one's in off the window. Kiss off the corner of the square, and it's going to be a timeout for Dana Dunson. Shipley really needed to see that one go down. Doesn't matter how it goes down, Brian. It's good for three points, and a 14 point Trinity lead will be right back after the timeout. Six oh five to play here in the third quarter. Centenary still looking for their first points of the second half. Right, As Trinity go. have gone on a 12-0 run coming out of the break. And no bigger smile in this gym than on the face of Maggie Shipley off of that three that came off the glass. Mentioned three-point shooting isn't her forte, but maybe things starting to go in her direction after a scoreless first half. A couple of buckets in a row, including that one off the bank. This one tied up under the centenary basket. And it'll stay with the ladies. After a brief conference here with the three officials. 
both teams set up and ready to play with really no complaints, but the referees just wanted to get something straight there. We're back in action, Jasmine Jones on the feed from Mayberry, back to Mayberry now. And Jones gets the shot up, comes up short and to the right. And the shot clock expires. The ladies just unaware of the situation that time as it didn't draw iron. And they can't capitalize off an offensive rebound. Here's Shipley now inside. Kicks it out for the corner three for Ashlyn Milton. And Coach Hill was very confident that that was going in. He was already looking down the other end of the floor. He knew he's got a shooter on his team. She's shown that today. Now cutting to the basket with Shipley getting underneath. Tipped away by Alana Jones. Now a 15-0 run to start the half. And really great selfless plays from Shipley. We've seen it from Coleman. As they get double teamed when they post up, unafraid to get it to their teammates. And that time it was the open Milton. Shipley following up her miss with another make on the layup. So she's suddenly on fire. Yeah, just like that. Look out, she's up to seven points in the game on three of five shooting. And it's something we got to talk to Coach Hill about. Trinity defeating TLU last week in Sakeen by 13, but they didn't put up many shots. It was a very slow paced game. And Coach Hill saying TLU was doing a good job collapsing on the post players, double teaming them. And it took until that second half for Trinity to adjust. And so it seems like it really has been the same story here today. Centenary is doubling, whether it's Coleman, whether it's Shipley, down on the post. And they have been very selfless with the basketball, getting it out. And Milton, as she so often does, delivering now four for six from three point range. We'll take a quick break on Tiger Network as Trinity up 51 to 32. They are on fire coming out of the locker room. Tigers going big out of the timeout with both Simmons and Coleman in alongside Shipley, Milton, and Nelson. Here's Drumgo. Gets the shot up and good to finally put an end to the scoring drought here to start the second half. Trinity went on a 23-0 run to start the second half against the ladies earlier this year. Their run cut short at 17 this time as Nelson steps into a three. And Milton trying to save it in. Keeps the play alive, but it arrives in the hands of Drumgo. Here's Powell for the corner three. That one's no good. Jones gets the offensive board. Her put back, no good. Third chance opportunity, no good for Powell. As despite the drought buster, Centenary just really struggling to make shots, even with a couple of opportunities that time. As Shipley takes the bump from Drum Go. And it'll be ball out of bounds for the Tigers. Shoulder check that time. For the first year from Alexandria, Louisiana. Here's Shipley stepping into another three. That one comes up just short. And Coleman's fouled. Looking for the putback. She'll head to the line. And we know there's so much that goes into these games and the game plans that the coaches put together, but it's just unbelievable how it feels like it really is just a flip of a switch from the first to the second half. 
every game seems to be the same story, and when you think that things might change, it just continues to remain the same. The Tigers, such a good job coming out of the locker room, making those changes, and coming out on fire. Tigers also already into the bonus, with just under four minutes to play in the quarter. I'll get them some more opportunities. Just a 5 of 11 start at the free throw line today. Centenary still yet to shoot a free throw. As Trinity have been pretty clean on their interior defense. And Centenary really haven't gotten into the Tigers paint very often. That one all the way around and out for Drumgo. And here's Shipley with some open court to Rome. Thought maybe there was a foul in there, but no whistle. And this game goes back to the other end. And now there's open court in front of Maggie Shipley, and you expect this to result in two points. I think you see the fitness of the Tigers. They're almost winning out against the ladies as both teams had run up and down the floor four consecutive times. Finally, Shipley, who we know has an incredible engine, can run all game, was the one willing to make that final sprint to the basket for two points. That's a great point and a very likely reason for the second halves that we're talking about here. The pressure that the Tigers put on from the very beginning of the game, it might not make an impact right away at the start, but for four quarters to see constant pressure, full court, right up in your face, it's what happens in the third and fourth quarter. The teams just can't handle it. And the Tigers, so used to it in practice, they're able to keep their conditioning and keep their footing. Coleman gets two looks at the basket that time, makes it count after her first shot was blocked. Good ball movement there as Centenary very clearly collapsing on Shipley's drive. And a double team in the backcourt, and that'll be Shipley up for two. Can't finish the layup, but Simmons is there for the follow-up. And the Tigers up to 59 now with two minutes to play in the quarter. They're 12th in the nation in scoring at 78 a game. And they're on pace by the look of things for that once again here at home. Powell with the long two no good and it's 3v1 going the other way. Milton now for Simmons. And that was almost the three man weave drill out of a practice situation. Tiger is always going to make that one count. A 25 point lead for Trinity, who led by just two going into the break as Trimmy knocks down another three. She made some big shots for the ladies today. And up in the double figures now with 11 points. That time the screen opens up. Shipley who kicks it out for a Nelson three-pointer. She's able to answer what Trimmy offered up at the other end. Just a fantastic play had to be drawn up because you had Coleman and Simmons providing the double screen, allowing Shipley to get around it. And then Centenary, Centenary even though they did a nice job getting to Shipley, again, unafraid to share it with her teammate, finding Nelson open in the corner. So really a great play all around on that one for the Tigers. Coach will change up the look here for the last 30 seconds of the third quarter with Ackerman and Leong into the game for Milton and Coleman. Nelson there matched up with Powell. Here's Simmons. Shipley trying to post up. Looks like Shipley just switching roles with Simmons here. She catches it in the paint. Maybe got caught a little too deep, but fouled on her way up to shoot. And with 15.1 to go in the quarter, we'll head to the line for two. Shipley knocks down her first free throw. Trinity now improving to six, and 12, 6 for 12 from the line, so not their best performance. They average 66% from the line, but they've done their work elsewhere. Meanwhile, Centenary yet to attempt a free throw. 
Very rare to see that. One last chance for Centenary. They throw it away with now 14.3 to go. It'll actually be the Tigers with a chance at the last shot of the quarter. Nelson out to Molly Pretty, who recently checked into the game, looking for a quick three-pointer. Uh, that one doesn't draw iron. And it turns over back to Centenary for a chance at the last shot of the quarter. Nobody wants the last shot right now. And if there's someone that feels like a little bit of a dark horse to get some more playing time as the season enters the home stretch, it does feel like Molly Pretty has an opportunity as the clock expires. Drumgo nailing what looks to be the buzzer beater. We'll see if they count it. Looked to me like the red lights had come on. We'll see on the replay. Yeah. Definitely after the buzzer, but just to finish that quick thought, Molly Pretty, someone who knocked down six three-pointers earlier this year against Dallas. So that three-point shooting that we were talking about, the Tigers looking for, she is one of those candidates to get some more playing time. So we'll see if this fourth quarter now with a bigger lead, Tigers up 25. We'll be right back on Tiger Network, see who gets some playing time. Robbins back in to orchestrate the Trinity offense here. They won the third quarter by 23 points, adding on to the two-point halftime lead. Simmons adds two more. They continue to be a third-quarter team. Halftime adjustments, second-half energy. Definitely on display here. The ladies able to break the press. They got two going to the hoop. Powell can't finish with the left hand. And Simmons brings it clear. Now Leong into the lane at the other end. Ackerman underneath for Simmons. Wanted to just keep the ball moving, but threw it away. Powell with the steal. A lot of running there for no points in the opening minute of the fourth quarter. Here's Drumgo. Crosses over to the right hand. Skip pass across for Jasmine Jones. Gets inside and fouled by Simmons. Jones has really had a solid game, four points, seven rebounds, four of which have been offensive, giving her team second chance, often third chances. She had 12 points against Trinity back in December. She also had 12 points in the loss yesterday to Shriner. Centenary experiencing a little bit of what Trinity had to go through when they went to Shreveport. It was part of a long road trip at the time, early December. Finals had just ended here on campus and both the men's and women's teams first went up to Sherman, Texas to face Austin College and then they went over to Shreveport playing in one weekend. This time it is Centenary who was in Kerrville last night, had to drive down about an hour and a half to face Trinity. And like we talked about at the end of the third quarter, Molly Pretty, someone who seems to be the person who can come in and make those threes, and she does just that on that last possession, her first points of the afternoon. Kickball will keep possession with the ladies. Of course, this weekend is the home side of the same two matchups. Tomorrow, Austin College will be in town on the game that was originally scheduled for Friday. 
postponed because of the weather in North Texas. That didn't quite reach Trinity. You know, we had the day off of school, but I think in the end it was just a few miles further north where the driving conditions were a concern. Can't say I was complaining, of course. Yeah, it was a little frustrating though as Molly Pretty getting the nice pass there from Ackerman and delivering the two points. We had all the not fun stuff of the cold without the fun snow. And our friends even up in Austin, Austin, Texas, not Austin College, they had snow just 60 miles north of us, but we didn't get the white flurries here. Austin College too, up in North Texas. But that's quite the drive. That'll be the drive for the SCAC Championship Tournament in a couple of weeks. Both the men's and women's teams will be headed up there. I haven't done the math. I'm pretty sure it's guaranteed for both teams to be in the top six. And both teams will be hoping to take the top seed and get a first round bye, which has historically been very important for teams to go on and win the tournament. Here's Ackerman stepping into a three-pointer. That one comes up short. Three ball hasn't fallen for her today. 0 of 5. She's found some really good assists, as we're used to seeing. And as Simmons grabs the rebound and hands it off for Ackerman. And Trinity taking a big step towards earning that first seed with that victory last week in Seguin. Despite the 15-game winning streak, the Bulldogs were right there with the Tigers undefeated in conference play as Leon gets on the scoreboard herself. Just four points on the day, but a nice spin move with the layup. The Bulldogs had been unbeaten before the Tigers went up to Seguin and defeated them. They're still right there, so we'll have the Bulldogs and the Tigers later this week as the Tigers look to wrap up that number one seed. And a big steal that time from Robbins. Ripping it away from Drumgo and in transition, it's a give and go underneath the basket with Simmons. And Robbins is fouled. You're gonna look at the steal here. Just ripping it away from Drumgo. And Robbins is up to five steals, so halfway to that 10 mark that she reached in Shreveport. Just has such a knack for taking the ball away. Tigers now down to 50% on free throws. Centenary is one of two on their single trip to the line. That second free throw from Robbins adds on to what is now a 34 point Trinity lead. Pretty able to protect the cup that time as Jasmine Jones gets another offensive rebound and another as she missed twice. Continuing to do good work on the boards but couldn't make it count that time. Here's Simmons with the long pass from Robbins. Molly Pretty now for another three-pointer. That one rims out. Six minutes to go in the game. Here's Jones into the inside. That one comes off the front of the rim. And Ackerman eventually corrals the rebound. Tigers just one make away from their season average in scoring. And it did feel like that 70 was gonna be the magic number. Centenary only getting over 70 points once this year. And again, Leon takes a nice pass from Robbins and gets two more points. Centenary only getting over that 70 mark once, and you look at Trinity's average being at 78, it felt like for this to be a real ball game, the ladies were gonna have to hold Trinity below that 70 mark, but they just have been unable to do so. Powell up for two points there, and I think a big change has been the off the ball movement for the Tigers. Particularly in the second half, we've seen some really good cuts to the basket. Saw screen and roll movement that time from Leong. Definitely been more dynamic off the ball, and that's led to what is now a 34-point lead as we're into the final media timeout. 4.57 to go, and the number 24 Trinity Tigers in full control here in Calgard Gym.
Final five minutes of action here on the second game of our doubleheader. First day of our back-to-back. -back. And it's Jennifer Tierney straight into the game, hoisting up a three-pointer from the corner. No good. Now it's out to Leong. Tigers swing it around the arc. Simmons posting up. The mid-range jumper comes up short. A lot of candidates on the floor right now for that role of the off-the-bench shooter that we talked about so much today. Just see who can get going. I think they're going to use these final few minutes of the game to try and develop a rhythm with the likes of Leong, Ackerman, Pretty. Even Tierney has shown that she can make them at times as well. Simmons dumped to the floor that time. The ladies can't make a count with the second chance opportunity. Definitely Ryan Tierney getting a career high 10 points also against Dallas like Pretty. It was during that era of the season when there was a lot of action of who was in and out and a lot of changes in the starting lineup. Tigers were able to keep their winning streak going through that. But I think you're definitely right as they've defeated teams like Colorado twice, some of their biggest competition and getting that big win in Seguin against TLU. They're definitely going to use these last games as testing for how they're going to be able to go not only into the SCAC tournament, but ultimately that NCAA tournament that the Tigers always strive to be in. And it's, it's really a privilege when you can be on a 15-game winning streak, average 78 points, which is good for 12th in the nation, and you're able to still tinker and still improve your team. It's really a great position to be in. And an opportunity now for Ali Beck. First year out of Dripping Springs, Texas. Into the game for Leong. Just to get some experience at the college level. And I think Ackerman not only trying to play her way back into a rhythm, but she missed a lot of time and there's really no substitute for building that in-game fitness as well. So a good chance for her here as she works the screen and roll with Simmons. And the return to Ackerman just couldn't hold it. Would have been really nice movement from those two. And it'll be a great chance for the rest of the Tigers, too, to really get in-game fitness. They have four games remaining just this week, barring no ice or snow. And we'll be right back at it tomorrow, right here at Calgar Gym. Austin College coming to town. The Kangaroos winning the SCAC Championship just two years ago as Pretty rains down a three. Gets the Tigers over 80. But I think that would be that will be a great matchup here on a Sunday afternoon. Austin College, a team that has been known to give Trinity some issues in the past, and they have a lot of returning players from that championship team. Yeah, it should be a good one. And of course, if you're in town, that's a premier game in terms of Skak women's basketball. Definitely come out and support. If not, we'll be right here on the Tiger Network as always. Two and a half minutes to go. And Coach Hill is going to take a quick timeout. And we will take it with them with the score at 81 to 45 for Trinity. Barring something unexpected, it looks like Haley Coleman will lead Trinity in scoring with 17 points. It'll be the first time in 2022 that it wasn't Maggie Shipley or Ashlyn Milton to lead the way offensively for the Tigers. Coleman was the last one to do so in the final two games of 2021 against Worcester State and Letourneau, and she went over 20 in both contests. As Goodwin, who's into the game for the first time, fighting for the offensive rebound, but St. Mary come away with it. And to your point at the break, Brian, Coleman did a lot of passing and got double teamed a lot to end up with 17 points. 
yeah, it's just pretty crazy that that doesn't feel like she shot a whole lot because she was distributing the ball so well. But you turn around and she has 17 points to lead the way. I mean, last week in Seguin, she did have 14 points, but she also had a career high, six assists. So it's really a new part of her game that she's getting really comfortable with distributing the ball. But as always, she is just an automatic bucket down low. What a pass that was from Ackerman. Ended in a foul. Or Beck, who was going to get an open look. Not for the contact, but that's the type of eye for a pass that Ackerman has shown. And now her fifth season in the team as Destiny Powell drops in another three, up to 17 in the game on 7 of 22 shooting. Final minute and a half. Goodwin sets the screen here for Tierney. Deflected. And it falls for Molly Pretty. It's now two of five from three in the game. Alana Jones tries to dump that one off for Leda under the basket. Tipped away by the Tigers, who got back just in time. Minute and seven seconds to go. Both teams, one of their last eight from the floor. As Trinity just barely got over that season average, and they've gone pretty cold since. That one was up and good for Powell, but waved away for the travel. For the ladies, I think there's a lot to be excited about. They have a pretty young roster. Looking at Destiny Powell, still just a junior. Jasmine Jones, a junior. Addie Tremi, who has had some good games against Trinity, just a sophomore. And they have their male counterparts in Shreveport to look at as what could be a really successful basketball program. The gents have done a great job and this young ladies team has the potential. We'll see if it's interim head coach Dana Dunson who stays at the helm or if it's someone else, but there definitely is some things to be excited about down in Shreveport. As the pinch rises up to applaud Molly Pretty. Now three of six in the game and that one came off some really good ball movement. Goodwin and Tierney working it down low to open it up for Pretty on the outside. Ackerman grabs the loose ball, and if she can advance it, she'll be able to dribble this one out. Powell putting up some final resistance, and that will do it. The Tigers take this one 84 to 48 with a huge second half after the ladies went into the breakdown just two. Trinity outscored them 32 to nine in the third quarter and 18 to seven in the fourth. Brian, same old story. The second half adjustment is just coming up huge. Yeah, same old story, but it doesn't get old every single time. Such a joy to see this team make adjustments and just flip that switch that we mentioned. Doesn't we know it's not magic, but it certainly feels like magic is just how well they come out of the locker room and perform. So. Quite the day of basketball we had here, the men and women for Trinity coming up with big victories. This women's team now winners of 16 in a row, Ryan. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable indeed. Dominated in the paint today, 42 points to just 18 for Centenary. And in that regard, they were led by Haley Coleman, who finished with 17 to lead. The Tigers scores eight rebounds and three assists, no turnovers, and a really effective 20 minutes of action for Haley Coleman. Milton added 14, some hot three-point shooting on four of six from beyond the arc. Shipley into double figures with a good second half of 11 points. Molly Pretty, 11 points as well off the bench, and Kelly Simmons with 12 and nine, doing the work against Centenary as she did earlier in the season. For the ladies, Powell had 17, Trimmy had 11. And ultimately, they look like a team playing on a back-to-back -back against this Tiger team who puts the pressure on and really tests your fitness as they faded away in the second half. A lot to build on, to your point, based on that first half performance. But it's number 16 in a row for Trinity, who are going to be in action once again tomorrow. It will be the men at 1 o'clock and the women at 3 o'clock against Austin College. Tune in for that one or come to Calgar Gym to cheer on the Tigers. Thank you for sticking with us here through the doubleheader of Trinity and Centenary Basketball. My name is Ryan Figert. It's been a pleasure to be alongside Brian Yantelson, and of course we thank Josh Moxagimba, Ryan Cedillo, and our whole student crew who make things possible here on the Tiger Network.
Hope you have a good Saturday evening. Thanks.